Jobless right now at 9%. You gave a speech on Friday in Georgia, and you said the following about this president. You want to be a country that creates food stamps, in which case, frankly, Obama is an enormous success. The most successful food stamp president in American history. Or do you want to be a country that creates paychecks? First of all, you gave a speech in Georgia with language a lot of people think could be coded racially tinged language, calling the president, the first black president, a, a food stamp president. Oh, what did you on, mean David, and what was the point? That's, that's bizarre. That, this kind of automatic pre reference to racism, this is the president of the United States. The president of the United States has to be held accountable. Now, the idea that, and, I, and what I said is factually true, 47 million Americans are on food stamps. One out of every six Americans is on food stamps. And to hide behind the charge of racism, I have, I have never said anything about President Obama which is racist. Well, what did you mean? Well, it's very simple. He has policies, and I, I used a very direct analogy. He follows the same destructive political model that destroyed the city of Detroit. I follow the model that Rick Perry and others have used to create more jobs in Texas. Well, I mean, I don't know how I to explain this, uh, Richard, then, except uh -huh. that he's an altacock and that he's got his ideas so old, so yesterday, he's still talking like Reagan and food stamps and welfare queens and all that lingua we went through back in the 70s and 80s. We all got tired of it, all had that tinge to it we didn't like, and we dropped it. I, 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 as a country, dropped it. The right wing even dropped it. They stopped talking in this dog whistle like only the r white racists were going to hear you because everybody hears you now. They know what the whistle sounds like. Is Newt just out of date or is he deliberately using this dog whistle in a way that he thinks he knows exactly what he's doing he doesn't care what we think over the space of the last 48 hours the republican party lost three of its highest profile presidential contenders on saturday night in a strange hour of television that was kind of a cross between a traveling variety show and that night when Geraldo Rivera revealed the contents of Al Capone's vault, uh, former Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee Saturday night announced that he would not be running for president. He said that uh, he checked and found that he did not have God's blessing to run. The most interesting and, and maybe the strangest part of that whole announcement, I think, was how it ended. Uh, so here's Mike Huckabee having just said he is not going to run for president. He ends his show. He says goodbye. Like he wraps up, says, I'll be back next week. And then right away, this other thing happens. I don't know enough about Fox News to know why this happened, but this is what it looked like on the air. From New York, this is Mike Huckabee. Good night. God bless. And uh, I guess I'll be back next week. I'm Donald Trump, and this is a special announcement. Mike Huckabee is not going to be running for president. This might be considered by some people, not necessarily me, bad news, because he is a terrific guy. And frankly, I think it'd be a terrific president. But a lot of people are very happy that he will not be running. Yeah, I don't, and then it just goes on and on and on. It's a Huckabee alert. I don't... Mike Huckabee says he's not running, and then he says good night, and then a little piece of tape rolls of Donald Trump, obviously taped earlier, so responding or pre-sponding to the news that Mike Huckabee isn't running, which we've just learned, but now Donald Trump has re-announced by shouting? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but then a little more than 36 hours later, there was Donald Trump again announcing that he would not be running either, to the surprise of absolutely no one other than the mysterious people who vote in Republican Party straw polls this time of year. But beyond Republican candidates overtly saying that they will not run, one other high-profile Republican candidate effectively took himself out of the running this weekend. I am not going to justify this. I'm not going to explain this. The, the attack on Paul Ryan, the support for an individual mandate in, in health care. Folks, don't ask me to explain this. There is no explanation. If you are trying to become the Republican nominee for president, that is not the impression you are looking to make. But that's kind of how it's going for Newt Gingrich, whose candidacy for president is already 
becoming a little bit unraveled. The justification for his candidacy, his brand in the Republican Party, is that he is supposedly an ideas guy, right? A policy guy. But what they are complaining about on conservative talk radio, as you just saw, and what people are frankly guffawing about all over the full spectrum of news and political analysis, is that Mr. Gingrich does not seem to have policy positions, even though he's supposedly the policy guy. Last month, Mr. Gingrich told Time magazine that he liked the Paul Ryan kill Medicare budget. He said he would vote for it, but it didn't go far enough. Then this weekend on Meet the Press, Mr. Gingrich said the Ryan plan went too far. And he's therefore against it. On the same program, Mr. Gingrich affirmed that he not only likes the idea of an individual mandate in health reform, but he has liked that idea for decades. This morning, however, he put out a web video denouncing the individual mandate in health reform. Newt Gingrich has also come out against his own advocacy for cap and trade as a policy to deal with global warming. He's also vociferously against his own position on intervening in Libya. It, it is a survivable thing for a presidential candidate to get confused about his or her position on a specific thing, or even to change his or her mind on something over time. But when it's every policy issue of substance... And when you're changing your mind within 24-hour periods and then sometimes changing it right back again, and you're supposed to be the policy guy, and you have all of the other flaws that Newt Gingrich has as a candidate, then what happens is people just end up not taking you seriously. Oh. Newt Gingrich's problems are so far beyond just his multiple marriages and all that. His ethanol love affair right now. On 7th of March, he said, let's go get Gaddafi. On the 23rd of March, he says, I never favored intervention. He did it on television. On well, us. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, he, he's one of these people who says that to understand Barack Obama, you need to understand his Kenyan anti-colonial mentality. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is just not a serious well, thing. I think we know with reasonable certainty that standing up there on the west front of the Capitol on January 20th, 2013, will be one of three people, Obama, Pawlenty, and Daniels. I think that's it. Conservative commentator George Will speaking on ABC's Sunday morning show yesterday. Um, I don't usually agree with anything that Mr. Will says or argues or finds to be true about the world. In this case, I think um, I agree with his analysis. I think he's got it right. I mean, think about the universe of potential and declared Republican presidential candidates right now. Haley Barber took himself out of the running, saying he did not have the fire in the belly. Mike Pence, remember his mom sort of said he might be announcing that he would run, uh, but then he took himself out of the running too. Mike Huckabee, again this weekend, he said he did not think he had God's blessing to run. Donald Trump today took himself out of the running, saying something about promising to still be loud. I don't know. Uh, Newt Gingrich, technically still running, but struggling to be taken seriously. Ron Paul. Yes, Ron Paul is running again, Ron Paul Revolution. Gary Johnson, essentially the same policy positions as Ron Paul, but without the charisma or the following. Rick Santorum, just Google him sometime. Not at work, though. There's a guy named Fred Carger who's running, locking up the pretty lonely far-right pro-gay marriage platform. Yeah. Buddy Romer, he once lost a Republican Party primary to David Duke, the Klansman. Uh, John Bolton. Moving on, Herman Cain, former CEO of a mafia-themed pizza chain. Michelle Bachman, she, I would say, is most likely to win the Mike Huckabee Memorial, but otherwise meaningless first place in the Iowa Caucuses Award this year. Mitt Romney could conceivably win New Hampshire, much to the chagrin of everybody in the Republican Party. There is no well-known, well-financed figure in the Republican Party who is more disliked among Republican operatives and politicos than Mitt Romney. He does not have a friend in the world, in that world in which he needs friends. Sarah Palin, she could make a run of it. Who knows if she will? I guess we will cross that bridge when we come to it. John Huntsman, Barack Obama's former ambassador to China, which may be enough said about him. And that brings us, as George Will said, to Tim Pawlenty and Mitch Daniels. The relative merits of each, widely understood and just as widely, frankly, dismissed, as neither of them is known as having much more charisma than your average grape tomato.